Hey everybody, it's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's LEGO Robotics. Today our video is going to be about line following. Um, basically in this video I just want to show you the different types of programs you can use, use for line following. I have a couple of robots here we're going to use to follow this line. Um, so a couple of things on just the track. Um, you'll notice that it's, it's pretty windy. I, I kind of do that on purpose so that my students really have to adjust and experiment with their program to make sure that it can stay on the line so they don't get too crazy and bumping up their motor speeds to go too fast but I want them to kind of find out what the perfect um, combination is of their motor speed and their reflected light and how much how long how far they're coming off the black line so on this video I wanted to show you some basic tips on line following um, basically on the brick and then go to the laptop for the software to show you how to increase your speed and to hopefully go a little faster. So let's go to the brick. So there's a couple of things you need to know before we go to the programming so you understand all of the reasonings and numbers behind what we do in the program. So if we go to port view and go to the port that you have your color sensor in, um, what we want to do is we want to definitely get some numbers here. So what I have is I have my color sensor here on the white and I'm getting 89, 88% reflected light. And then when we come to the, the black, it is 7%. So the reason why those numbers are important is when I do my programming, either on the brick or the laptop, I want to make sure I can set my numbers accordingly to how far um, my color sensor would be coming off the black line and what type of reflections I'm getting from either the white or the black. So one more time, if on the black it's 7% and on the white uh, about 84. And it's going to vary according to your environment, your room. If you're getting a lot of light this could be higher. If it's darker it could be a lot lower. So now let's go to the programming. Okay, so for just an easy brick program for this, we're going to go down here to brick program. And what's really nice about this is it's just basically four blocks. For the brick programming, here's all I want to do. I want to go up uh, to basically my move tank block right there. And then what I want to do, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can make this a right turn or you can make come down here and make it a left turn. Um, but let's go ahead and just pick left. I want my uh, robot to turn left and then what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to go to my reflected light block. Now remember those numbers we looked at because that's going to be important here. Um, this is going to now be for black and I can kind of set that how I want but remember we were getting about 8%. We can mess with 10 but that gets a little scary because if the color, you know, from the black, if it goes over 10, then our robot doesn't stay on the line. So usually I'll be safe and like to put this at 25, just because I know that the white is definitely not going to be less than 25% reflected light. So I'm going to keep it at 25, but we can always experiment with the 10 if we wanted to. So if you remember, we made that a left turn. So this next block is going to have to be a right turn. So we're going back to that move tank block. Sorry if this is shaky. And we're going to make that now a right turn. And then we're going to come back up here and go to that same reflected light block. Now here's the problem. Um, we don't want less than 50. We want, we want a greater than number. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. I'm going to keep pressing up. And now we see that greater than or equal to. And if you remember, we were in the 80s. I think it was 88. So what I want to do is bump this hopefully as high as I can. And this is the cool part with my students is they experiment to see which you know is the best numbers to put. Um, I can go 65. It was at it was close in the upper 80s. So I'm just going to stick it with 65 right there. And then lastly, I got to make sure. Sorry about the focusing on here. This is just wild. I just want to make sure I loop that last block. Wow, what is going on with my focus? Okay, make sure we loop that last block so that this keeps going. 
So let's go ahead and put this on the line. Okay, I have my robot here with the brick program on it. Uh, if you guys remember the numbers, I have 25% of the dark reflected light. So basically, again, my robot will, let me just go back to this program and show you. My robot will turn to the right if it sees less than 25% reflected light. And then it will turn to the left if it sees over 65% reflected light. So in the robot, that's why you will see this windshield wiper action is because it, if it sees dark, it's going to go one way. If it sees light, it, go back, it goes back to the other way. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go through this video. I'm going to basically time this because what I want to do in this video is show you the difference in speed or how, quick, how much quicker we can do this on the laptop than the brick program. But... When it comes down to it, we can all follow the line either way. So let me go ahead and show you this program. So again, there's the windshield wiper action where it sees dark, goes in one direction, sees light, goes the other direction. And no, I don't make any guarantees that these numbers are going to work for your uh, room or wherever you're following this line. Um, today is a dark day. It's a rainy day. So that can affect our numbers, what we put it at. Ooh, almost came off the line there, but it found its way back. And we will stop it right there. Okay, everybody. So I went and took this robot and redid the whole track. And this robot finished the entire track in 54.22 seconds. So now what I want to do is hop on the laptop, look at the Lego Mindstorm software, and see if we can improve on that by doing a laptop program for this line-following robot. So let's go to the software. All right, everybody, I'm on my Lego Mindstorm software here, opened up a new uh, program template. So let me go ahead and show you what this uh, black line following program will be on the laptop. So here we go. First things first is you're gonna go to this uh, orange tab here and we're gonna pull out a loop block because we want this robot to keep going on and on and on until it finishes this line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here and put a switch in it. Okay, so the first things first is we're going to come here and we're going to put this on for our color sensor. We're going to compare and reflected light intensity. And so what we're going to do here is kind of like on the brick, um, it's asking for the minimum reflected light here. That has it at 50 and I think that's way too high. Um, this will vary according to your environment again on how much light you're getting in your classroom or wherever you're uh, doing this line following. So if you remember from the brick, we were getting about eight or nine percent uh, reflected light. But you give you, you want to give yourself a little cushion on that. So I'm going to just go ahead and go 20. Um, obviously, you you can experiment with this number. It might go down, might go up, depends. But I'm going to just leave it at 20. All right, next thing is we're going to go to your uh, green here and we're going to go to your move tank block. We're going to go ahead and turn it on. And here is now what we're going to do with your motor speeds here. Um, we're going to basically, I don't want to waste time. I'll go ahead and try to get this as fast as I can be. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this at negative 10 and 100 because we want this thing to try to go as fast as it can and then we'll come down here and we'll turn it on and we'll just flip this because you know the the different motor so we're just going to do it the opposite 100 and negative 10. okay so it's already looped so what i want to do now is the difference between this and the brick program is with the brick it's around 75% motor speed. So the benefit, if you want to go faster, is on the laptop here. I can change this to 100 and hopefully go a lot faster. 
So let me download this and then we'll take it back to the track. Okay, everybody. So I have the same robot with the different laptop program again. And let's go ahead and figure out how fast this is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and videotape it going through. And at the end, I'll show you uh, from my stopwatch how fast this went. So here we go. You can kind of tell from this and the brick program how this one's going a lot faster already. And Okay, everybody, I took out my stopwatch, uh, timed this one. Not as fast as I thought uh, compared to the brick program, but this one was, uh, this one finished in 48.18, 48.18 seconds. So, you know, we can claim that it was faster than the other one. I, I thought it would have been a lot faster, but you know, what you can do is we can go back and start to mess with that uh, number. And not that we can raise the motor speed, but we can uh, start to change the other, that negative 10. We can possibly make it a negative 5 to try to go faster. We, you know, we can experiment with that. So that's the difference between the brick and the laptop program. What I want to do is just for fun show you that the Sirius robot how fast this can do the line following. So let me bring this guy up. Um, this guy actually has the brick program on it. Uh, I just want to have some fun and do uh, a line of with this with the brick and then put that same laptop program on here. Now I know it has the double color sensors, but that'll be for a different video. So let's go ahead and just watch uh, the Sirius robot take, take on this and I'll time it. Obviously, the bigger tires is going to get a really uh, lower number than would be with the regular tires, the EV3 tires. It's just kind of mesmerizing to watch. And we are done. Okay, everybody, I redid the uh, black line following of the Sirius robot with the brick program on it, and it finished it in a blistering 38.66 seconds. So it outdid um, the other robot by a long shot. So what I want to do now to finish off this video is put the same laptop program on here and see how fast that might be. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, everybody, so this is the Sirius robot with the laptop program on it. Um, it's the same one as the one previous one where it's at uh, 100 motor speed and negative 10 for it coming off the black line. So let's see this program. What will be really interesting is to compare this speed to the brick program that Sirius was running before. So like I did last time, after this uh, robot finishes uh, the run, I'll go ahead and post the speed on it. How long did it take it to finish? And, wow, that was pretty fast. We'll compare it to the other one. Okay, everybody, so I took out my stopwatch, timed it. The Sirius robot completed the track with the laptop program in 44.19 seconds. So it's just one of those interesting things that you have to go through uh, to 
adjust and fix and modify things to make it to your liking. So I could sit here all day and try to speed this up. I won't. I'll just leave it at, like it is. Um, what I want to do, though, is before I leave you is to show you some really fast times from my class and then it'll be done. All right, guys. So enjoy these videos. I am Mr. Hino from Hino's Lego Robotics. I am out.